I'm Jeremy Veldman and today we're going to show you how to clean the primary mirror of a Dobsonian telescope. All right, so I'm here with my buddy Rick. We're in the backyard today. It's a hot June day, so we're going to work in the shade. Now, I own a 20-inch Dobsonian telescope. Here's the primary mirror. 20 inches means it's the diameter of the primary mirror. Again, you can think of a Dobsonian as a giant light bucket that just gathers light and then focuses out to the side. And the size of the primary gathering, light gathering cell, whether it's a mirror if you have a Dobsonian or a lens if you have a reflector, a refractor, is ultimately what determines the, I guess the quality of the telescope if you're judging it based on the merits of its light gathering capability. Now the catch is, again, I've got my mirror here. I use my 20 inch whenever I can get it out, but every once in a while over time, it's gonna gather dust and maybe a few stains on it and it needs to be cleaned. Now. It's probably good the way it is. I could take it out tonight, still use it, but it's good every once in a while to clean it. And that's where you need an expert. Somebody who's done it before, has the right materials, and can clean it properly. So that's why I bring in my buddy Rick. So uh, one of the reasons we go through such a rigmarole to clean a primary mirror or any mirror in a telescope is that the reflective surface on a telescope mirror is on the front. The mirror on your dresser or uh, just in your car, just about any other mirror you ever deal with, that mirror reflective surface is actually on the back side of the glass. And you've seen this if you've ever kind of looked off to the edge and you saw a little bit of a double image in, uh, in the mirror uh, in certain conditions because you'll get a reflection back to you off that front unmirrored surface of the glass and then the one from the back surface reflecting back through it and this is uh, th that would mess up telescope optics so the mirror coating is actually on the front of the mirror in most daubs that mirror coating is aluminum and it is not overcoated uh, in a lot of Schmidt Cassegrain's where the primary mirror is, you've got a corrector plate in the front, but you take that out, and if you've got to clean the primary mirror in that, it's much more difficult to get out, so most people try to clean them in place. That's a subject for another video, but uh, those mirrors are often have a coating on top of the reflective coating, which makes them a little more robust to cleaning, but if you're cleaning, uh, the mirror and a daub, they very seldom have any kind of protective coating over the aluminized surface. So you want to be careful not to scratch it. And by that, I mean don't wipe the dust off ever. Don't wipe it with anything ever. The dust is like sandpaper and will scratch the mirror. Uh, you'll be surprised how dirty that mirror can look to you before it actually starts impacting your view. Um, I wouldn't do it. Uh, I wouldn't say this one's actually needs it yet, but we've got the telescope broke down for some other repairs, and so it's just an easy opportunity to go ahead and do it and make a video. So that's what we're going to do. What I want to do is show you the process and some special things to consider. All right, <clears throat> what I want to do is talk about the uh, materials that you're going to need to clean a mirror. I have a, a container here that's big enough to submerge the mirror in, and that's a key feature. You want to be able to submerge the mirror completely in water. Uh, this happens to be something they sell for mixing up bags of sacrete concrete. So uh, something, or a bathtub, you can do this in a bathtub or a kitchen sink, depending on the size of the mirror. But the idea is to get the mirror in some completely submerged died uh, you're going to try to float the dirt off the mirror and we're also going to add a little bit of dishwashing detergent just a few drops and add mirror Now, this is a big wad of 
cotton ball, loose cotton material. I'm going to use that to, with as little pressure to no pressure as possible, run it across the top of the mirror, back and forth, gently, and allow that to shake any dirt loose off the mirror and have it float away. So, get it wet. let all these uh, ripples and what have you in the uh, water settle down and take a look and see if there are any trouble spots or particularly dirty spots where the dirt may not have come loose yet and needs a little more rubbing. And indeed there are a couple of spots and here I will use some very light pressure and wipe on those directly. And that got those off. Another one. All right, if I didn't mention before, this is plain old tap water straight out of my garden water hose. Um, but that's not what you want to finish off with because this water is, especially Memphis water, is loaded with wonderful minerals. But those leaves, spots and rings and everything on the mirror when it dries. So we're gonna take this out of the tub. I'm gonna look at it as I do, make sure I don't need to clean anything else. I think that's pretty good. And get it over here. And then I'm gonna get rid of this water. Now, this is distilled water. This is what I'll rinse the mirror with. And I've also added another chemical. This is Kodak uh, Photo Flow. It's used to cause water not to stick to photographic plant prints and leave marks on them in the development process. Um, there's, uh, I add it to anything I'm gonna use to clean mirrors with or lenses. Uh, it's a uh, one to 200 ratio mix. So one milliliter for every 200 milliliters of water. Uh, to, for a gallon, that turns out to be about 20 milliliters. And I've added that to this gallon of distilled water that I'll use for rinsing. Now what I want to do with this is stand it up someplace so the water can run off of it. And now to assist the water in running off of it. You can also do this step with a hair dryer, especially on smaller mirrors and if you're working inside. Uh, you want to let it dry, check it for water spots. If you get them, start over, do it again. Uh, that's a lot easier on much smaller mirrors. This one is a little bit of a, a handful. 
The difference between this and cleaning lenses is that you can actually rub most lenses. I wouldn't rub them with dust on them. I'd, if they got a heavy amount of dirt and dust on them, I'd try to get it wet and as much as you can float that dirt off of it before you start cleaning it with any kind of, of uh, rag or uh, something to, that would rub the, use the dust as a sandpaper. This is lens cleaner fluid that I make. Um, it's essentially 50-50 uh, alcohol and distilled water. And I'm talking about the alcohol lets you drink. So this is, uh, I get a pint of, of Everclear or something, the pure grain alcohol, and then I use distilled water. And in this case, some additional um, photo flow like I do for the rinse water. So um, this is what I use to clean lenses with. Lenses are typically multi-coated, uh, where they have uh, metal coatings that are deposited using uh, vaporization techniques, same thing that's done to coat these mirrors, but it's, uh, and then typically they're overcoated with some kind of clear uh, coating to keep that coating safe. So those are a little more robust about cleaning. Um, we'll let that dry and take a look at it again in a few minutes.